Today we are uh, going to talk about uh, one more aspects of Cognos, I mean the, the internal structures of Cognos. So I hope uh, you have gone through the other videos and you've got good understanding of uh, Framework Manager, how to create reports and all that. Um, and also you've gone through the, you know, pretty well about the, uh, about the modeling uh, part of it. So I'm going to talk about how Cognos stores the data and what are the different um, objects types at a, at, a, at a little bit more details. So here as you see that we, ha we have our simple model where we have uh, the test one which is a, a namespace and we have different query subjects. Then uh, you know we can have uh, another namespace here and then we can uh, define another set of uh, query subjects or we can source the query subjects from another namespace so let's let me show you how that works so let's say this is and we want to create another namespace so you click here at the root level and you say um, okay I think we have to put it here so you click at here and then you say create namespace so now if we create it here then it will um, it will do at under test one so which we may not like to do so the right way of doing it is that you first create under root you create your main master namespace and under master uh, you create some uh, sub namespaces so let's let's start maybe a fresh one so let's say this is we create a um, so so we can say one namespace for so one namespace for let's say one namespace you want to associate with your database so you call it a um, model or maybe it's better even if it's a uh, data model and then the other one you want to call it as more user friendly so which is would be used by your end user who are let's say you know business folks so you want to call it maybe business model okay or maybe you just say business so here in this data model you can define your objects now since you have already all of them defined here so you can just create shortcuts so you can create um, shortcut Okay, sorry, we ended up creating a shortcut somewhere else. So actually, you can define this itself as a um, shortcut to test one, um, or you can define, you can again run your metadata wizard. So let's assume that you know this, this we don't have any more. Uh, we're starting fresh. So we define a data model, and then we run the metadata wizard and we get our all we get all our objects so we just get all the tables so we we get all our tables and then under business you create you create a query subject which are let's say we call it you know sales agent so we want to create the query subjects here in the business which are more user friendly and then we expose this business model to the end user and not the 
data model because data model will have column names which you know which you may not need or may look confusing and then what you do is that you get the column name so for agent right you don't need the agent id region id manager id all you need is basically sales agent name So as you see, um, what we have done here is that we've got a, um, again assume that in our test is not there, we are starting fresh. We've defined a data model. We got imported all the uh, data model, uh, all the tables, and then we define a business one. And then we define, we are keeping only the columns which I want to expose to my end user, which are basically report user. So we have defined a sales agent and we are aliasing them and maybe here also you can alias the name to agent name and keep it proper case because you want to keep the case fine because these are the names which are going to show in the report. Then maybe you can define one and you can create a folder. Let's say you can call it sales measures what that means is that or you want to create all the fact information here so so under sales measure measure so the idea is that you will create all the uh, the sales related uh, data and sales related data could be uh, inventory could be sales so let's say we created a very subject call sales so which basically essential would have sales transaction let's say so and all it needs to have is the sale date and sale amount Okay, so here we have two um, amounts. Now you can have even nesting under sales measure. You can create another folder and group it uh, to uh, something else. But see, the idea is that now, and here you can have uh, you can create another. We don't have a lot of uh, tables, so we can uh, we don't have a lot of uh, ways to show. But you can create another query subject called maybe sales inventory or you know potential deals or who knows um, in sales inventory something like that and then you can define the other query subjects so then you can nicely group these things and so this is the way you can have uh, uh, define your uh, you know this is in a in a most of the cognos implementation in real life they have uh, at least multiple two or three namespaces and they have linked uh, in this way uh, so typically one you would create more like user focused and uh, one is more like your database focus in that way even if the database gets updated or you have to refresh your you can just apply this and then you can have uh, you know you can have your business in uh, business uh, query subjects intact the other uh, uh, tactics which is followed is let's say if you have uh, <coughs> if you have uh, primary key foreign key relations now remember every time the database changes and you have to refresh you you have to pretty much override existing the ones that means you destroy all your relations so um, so let's say if you want to inherit relations and then define some more relations on top of that you don't do it in the same model so in this model you inherit on the database relation and on top of that if you want to define some more relation you do it in the business because doing it here in the data model would destroy it because every time you refresh your data model because of underlining DB changes. So that's one thing. The other thing I would like to show you is that Cognos, how Cognos stores the data. So if you go to the folder, so you see uh, 
two most important files. One is the model.xml and there is test1.cpf. So cpf is a small file 2kb but all your uh, which is just has a meta information but all the details of all the objects, relations, their query subjects, query items all are stored in model.xml and model.xml looks something like this. As you see here you have your it's just like a XML file, typical XML file which represents your hierarchy of the uh, Cognos model. Here you have lots of query subjects here you have a namespace which is test1 then you have uh, your query subject uh, query subjects again is agents and then you have the definition uh, which is your data sources test1 which is the table and then it, it has a query select star from test1 which is basically gets all your columns uh, then you will have your uh, query items see you see query items agent ID so it just represents the uh, your underlining model so that's it for uh, this one thank you